I chopped off all my hair. <laughs> you will already know this if you follow me on social media or you watched last week's video, which is the weekly vlog and I show the big old chop. But if you haven't, this is the first like sit down video with <laughs> so for the past few years, I've been doing monthly favorites videos where I talk about books, films, TV, uh, video games now, because apparently that's the thing I'm into, um, music, uh, fashion, whatever it is, just general favorites. You may have noticed that there hasn't been one since November. And what is happening is instead of them being monthly favorites videos, we're gonna go to like current faves and I'm just gonna do them as and when I feel like doing them. We have to start with books. Da, 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 da. I read Jack of Hearts and Other Parts by Elsie Rosen. Rosen? Rosen. This is like a YA book about a gay kid called Jack who he's like out and proud and all of that and he starts writing a sex advice column for his friend um, and her website and then he starts getting these love notes in his locker that very quickly turn creepy like harassy stalkery like really quite scary um notes and it's him and his friends trying to figure out who these notes are and like dealing with all of that um and just general high school drama politics um i loved this um there is a lot of explicit sex in it which i'm always happy to see in ya because i just think that we need to be honest about these things. And I think the real wide range of LGBT representation in this is amazing. So you don't just have Jack, the main character who is gay. There's lots of other gay characters, queer characters, bisexual characters, and they, and they all kind of like just have their own stuff going on. So yes, would recommend. A lot of people have been talking about this book since it came out. Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine by Gail Honeyman. And reading this reminded me that it's been a while since I've read like contemporary adult fiction. I enjoyed this to the extent that you can enjoy it because there are a lot of heavy topics in it. The thing for me that was interesting about this is you're in Eleanor's head and she's just such a strange character. Like um, she is not someone who you might know. Like she's not someone who is necessarily relatable to a lot of people um 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 but you spend so much time with her that like she really grows on you and you really warm to her very much enjoyed and then i also read this non-fiction book called prisoners of geography by tim marshall and the subtitle is 10 maps that tell you everything you need to know about global politics and that's what this book is it's all about geopolitics um it each chapter takes you through like a different country or continent and it's one of those ones where you should really read this in physical form because it's got the maps in it. And as you're reading, you're always like flipping back to the map page to like reference what he's talking about. Like, oh yeah, that river. Okay, that border. Right, got it. Um, I love maps. And so this book was really interesting for me because it combined like my love of maps and then also a lot of politics stuff that I didn't really know. But I think this is really balanced in terms of being like, this is the position that they're in because of their geography. And so it's like, how can they work around that in their best national interest or whatever? So would recommend if you like maps and politics. And then real quick, because I don't know if I've mentioned this in YouTube videos, but um, my book has come out in Dutch and German. I feel like I might have mentioned the Dutch one, but I recently got given the um, German edition copies as well. Like, look at this cover, it is amazing. Also, I'm not gonna try and pronounce the German title. If you live in the Netherlands or Germany, then you can get my book doing it in your language. There you go. Um, and of course, my second book, which is coming out 13th of June, The Hormone Diaries, is available for pre-order now. So before we get onto games, I've got some TV favorites that I just have to talk about because you people have been asking me constantly what I think of sex education on Netflix. And I've talked about it online, um, but just for the, for the sake of it being in a favorites video, I loved it so much. I hear a lot of people complaining and getting confused about the aesthetic of it because they're like, it looks like it's set in America, even though it's set in the UK. And why are they all wearing clothes from the 1970s and 80s? And to that I say, just lean into it. Don't resist it. Very stylized aesthetic and actually it is quite pleasing to the eye and I 
understand why people are confused. They're like, it's in the UK, but why have they Americanized it? They've Americanized it because, do you remember when the Americans tried to remake Skins and the Inbetweeners? Yeah, that went horribly wrong. And those were terrible shows. And they put a bad name to amazing shows like the original Skins and the Inbetweeners. And so my theory is that they have Americanized it slightly. So then the Americans are happy with it as it is and they won't try to remake it. Regardless, sex education, oh my God. If you haven't seen it already, what are you doing? It's just on Netflix, like just go watch it. But it's about this like 16 year old boy called Otis and his mum is a sex therapist. Um, but Otis like has never masturbated, is kind of like grossed out by sex. But then because he kind of has learned all of this stuff from his mum, he then becomes his school's sex therapist and all of these other teenagers are coming to him for advice. And oh my God, his advice is so good. <laughs> like I'm watching this just going, Wow, he is a better sex educator than I am. <laughs> okay, video games. First of all, the PC that I've been playing <laughs> most of these video games on. Um, if you haven't already watched my PC building video, I would recommend, um, Ariel did a great job editing it. It is hilarious, um, if I say so myself. But I've now been using my PC for two months now, and I love it. I still have my MacBook Pro that I do a lot of things on because I haven't like fully transferred everything over. There's a lot of things that I still do not understand about a PC at all, but it is amazing for gaming. And I just wanna say a big thanks to the people at Overclockers because they gifted me most of the parts of that PC. Um, and I'll leave a link to them in the description, which is an affiliate link. Right, games though. I think we just need to talk about this one first, which is Civ 6 Gathering Storm. So the new expansion has come out and I've been playing it as much as possible, but I still haven't got anywhere near the end of like making massive robots and like rock bands and um, all of the other stuff. I have experienced some global warming though. Um, I, I built the amazing world wonder Petra in a city, but it was on a coastal tile. And then the sea levels rose and Petra disappeared. And I was devastated because I didn't build flood barriers in time. But I love Civ so much. It is definitely my favorite game. I should never have gotten into games. I blame Dan because the procrastination, oh dear. Another game that I absolutely adore, which is one that Dan and I have been streaming so much is Stardew Valley. And you basically just have a farm and there's lots of other little like missions and like things that you can do and like things that you unlock. Um, but ultimately you've got a farm and that's the main bit that Dan does. Dan does all of the farming and I do all of the other bits. Um, I love doing our streams of it and I love the people that come to our stream and like <laughs> get involved, get involved in the hand Dan farm. One of the things <laughs> that Dan has done is um, at the Halloween like event, he basically bought loads of gravestones. And every time I've died in this game, he's like, planted a gravestone in our farm. And I think there are currently like six gravestones or something. Yeah, for me. Dan has died once. I have died like six or seven times, but Dan spends most of his time farming, which isn't very dangerous. Whereas I'm down the mines fighting monsters. <sighs> anyway, so the other games that I put on this list, we actually haven't played in so long because of Civ. <laughs> <laughs> because of the new expansion that's come out and also because of streaming. But we played loads of Borderlands. It feels very Mad Maxi, but it's um, a lot more snow. <laughs> and you, it's just co-op and you're, you're fighting bad guys and you're trying to, oh, something to do with Vault Hunters. Wow, this is a great review. It's been so long since we played this. So another one that we've been playing is Artifact, which is like a card game, but you're like fighting against each other and your cards have different abilities and it's very strategic. And then another one that we actually have just started playing recently because it's like a new version of it. So we played the whole way through EDF 4 and it's a very silly game where aliens and giant insects and bugs have taken over the world and you're just, you're just shooting them. It's just a shooty game. Um, but it's kind of funny and it's kind of tongue in cheek because it's just like giant ants and giant spiders. Um, anyway, EDF 5 has come out. And so we downloaded that on our PlayStation and we just 
started playing that and it's very exciting. There are new enemies in it. We've got giant frogs. <laughs> I just like playing <laughs> games. I don't really know how to describe them. This is the same with me in fashion. I'm so bad at describing clothes. <laughs> Those are all my video game favorites. Um, if you're into it, please do follow me on Twitch and watch our streams. Um, I tend to like tweet or post on Insta stories when we go live because I have no schedule on there at all. Another favorite that I want to mention is that it was my birthday recently and one of the things that I did was a Harry Potter film marathon. Oh boy. So most of my friends stayed for films one to five. We started at 1 p.m. and my friends left about 1 a.m. And I was like, oh, I could go to bed and like carry on in the morning, but I wasn't really feeling very tired. So I was like, I'll just do one more and then see how I feel. So I watched six and then I was like, well, I can't watch seven part one and then go to bed. Like you have to watch seven part one and two together. Like you can't split them up. And I was like, I'm still not feeling very tired, but I knew committing to one meant committing to two, but I did it. <laughs> I freaking did it. Started at 1 p.m. on the Saturday and finished at 8.15 a.m. Sunday morning. Oh boy, I genuinely still feel jet lagged from it. Now, it is currently, as I am filming this, uh, two, three days later. <laughs> oh, and I did, yes, I did cry. I cried at one point and it's the one point that I always cry at and it's Fred. That, it just, I can't, I can't, it gets me every time. And my final favorite is a recent edition and that is the musical Come From Away. I got gifted tickets to go see it recently and oh my God, it just completely blew me away. It was amazing. It's basically about how after 9-11, US airspace was closed and loads of planes had to land elsewhere and they landed in this small Canadian town called Gander and suddenly this town increased by 7,000 people. And those people were stranded there for five days. And it's just this ensemble cast of loads of different characters, some of the people from Ganda and then some of the plain people as they call them, um, and about the relationships that they form and about community and about tragedy. And uh, like, I didn't cry, but I was basically like on the verge of crying for the entire thing. It's so powerful and God bless, Canadians. <laughs> Ariel, our lovely editor, she's a Canadian. She'll, she'll, she understands. It's so good. If you get a chance to see it, like go. It's currently on in the West End. I'm sure it's on in other places. It came from Broadway, I think. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. Thank you for watching. Please do give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and if you are cool with this new way that we're going to do favourites videos every once in a while rather than every month. I would love your feedback on that and do also let me know in the comments any of your recent favourite things and whether or not I can call myself a gamer. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe because I make new videos every week and also for the month of March there may be two videos every week. We're experimenting with new new ways of doing things around here so I hope you enjoy and hit that notification bell because apparently that's the only way you'll get notified when I make videos. Hope you have a great day. See you soon. Bye. Thank you.